Hey guys, this is your host, Vinyl Man Jeb of the Jeb and Greencast. Tyler, as always, is here as well. Hello! And today we have a special guest, Shane Tutmark um, <laughs> from Dular Welcome, and many Shane. other projects. Hi, Shane. How's it going? Mm-hmm. And actually, it's Delore. It's Delore. I think that's kind okay. of my my own pronunciation of it. I like it. Yeah. yeah, no worries. Delore. Yeah. It's an, that is a nice name though. I do like that. Delore. Okay. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, I do. I do too. I, I've been a big fan since uh new old friends, even though I came a little late to the party with your music. Uh, a good friend of mine, Ivan, who has done some album artwork for me as well, was like, you got to check out this band. And I was like, I will. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, you yeah. know, I, when, when we were, uh, introducing each other or, or meeting each other yeah. online, uh, I, came across the fact that you were born in 1999 yes (laughs) which means you were three years old when that album came out which really yeah so i didn't see it it was the height of uh, anything yeah Yeah, i don't i don't blame you to run i love the power pop genre tyler both and i were uh huge into any of the bands from that genre and i found stumbled across your music and uh, my first question for you actually is is uh delar just you or is it other members as well you know, it's just me at, you know, at different points in the early days of Delore, I was always kind of trying to make it more of a band. I always had sort of a rotating cast of kind of whoever I was hanging out with at the time ended up on, you know, whatever I was oh. working on. Um, but when I came back to Delore, um, it uh, it just kind of became clear to me kind of over the course of the last 10 years, really, of not doing Delore that kind of a big part of that sound was me um, being a multi-instrumentalist and stuff. And, uh, and then the fact that the pandemic happened right in the middle of working on the Royal we last year, um, it kind of just, you know, I didn't really have much of a choice. So I just kept (laughs) plowing ahead, but, but with this new record coming out, um, it was really the first time I like fully intentionally, you know, just made the whole record myself um, without any other, you know, plans of having collaborators or whatever. Oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> I gotta ask, where did the name, where did the name come from, Delore? You know, I, I was like 16, I think, when I was first putting together the first version of Delore, and I had seen the word Dolores in, um, in a book called uh, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. And I just thought the word looked beautiful. I, you know, didn't really even hardly know what it meant. And uh, so then I kind of shortened it to Delore and I added the U kind of European style. Nice. And uh, so it's, you know, more or less kind of my own made up variant of uh, Dolor, I guess. But, Dolor. But I, I, Dolor. I've always just called it Delore. So, yeah. So when did you start writing music? Um, you know, for, for me, music was a, a huge part of my household growing up. I, I have, I'm like four generations of, of music in my family. And, um, and, you know, I think the first thing that really made me want to be a musician was I saw that movie Amadeus about Mozart when I was like oh, six years old or something yeah. like that. And I just, I, you know, my first musical hero was Mozart and, um, I think because he had started really young, you know, they show him, you know, as a little child prodigy writing symphonies at like six and seven, you know, I think that I was just like, Ooh, that's cool. Um, and so I started kind of just making up little songs like most kids do, you know, but just kind of, as I got older, um, you know, and then I started learning guitar and, you know, started putting bands together in middle school. And so, I mean, I can hardly think of a time where music wasn't sort of, that's, you know, in some creative outlet of mine, but I probably got more, you know, somewhat serious about it in like sixth and seventh grade and stuff. And you have other projects too. What are, what are those projects names as well? Yeah. So after I closed the door on Delore initially um, in like 2006, 2007, um, I started in a family group called Shane Tutmark and the Traveling Mercies. And we did kind of roots and rockabilly and, gospel country you know all over the place um just kind of exploring my own family's roots in music and american roots um and then that when that project ended i started doing solo stuff and so for about 10 years i was just making music under my name shane tutmark and uh and then in 2017 i started a whole new project called solar twin and really it was making that record that it sort of brought me full circle back into Delore world because I was more or less making that record myself and it sort of just like reminded me of that energy that I had 
making Delora records. And uh, so okay. that kind of opened that door again for me. That's cool that it comes like back full circle, you know, like you, you start something, you end something, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, it's back again. <laughs> it's there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, had you asked me five years ago or really any time, mm-hmm. you know, um, over the last 10 years, you know, leading up to this, it, it really wasn't something I anticipated ever returning to, but it sort of wow. just was so natural and um, organic the way it sort of pulled me back in. <laughs> we can always we are just, every musician I know has always been spontaneous in their decisions. And yeah, basically what I have to say is when someone quits a project, never say never. Oh, yeah. Right. You know, so right. one day there is, you might not think there's a chance, but you never know. And uh, yeah, I've definitely had to learn to never say never, you know, like, uh, you know, people have asked me like, are you, you know, are you ever going to collaborate with other musicians again on your records? And, you know, it's like, I, I'll never say no about anything yeah, you know it's cool because it's you like, never you know, know i've had projects too like we're kind of similar i was looking at our uh, band camps and how we layered it out it's not just one like not just you it's like all these different things under you and that's how i set my band camp up too so i was, I was gonna text you like we're one of the same a little bit so i have somebody to look up to which is awesome uh because i i don't i have so many projects that i've done but the doors never close they're always like if a band comes back that i used to work with so be it i would love to work with them again there's no music is always in that wave so i thought that was really cool yeah, you know, honestly, that's kind of a newer development for me. I, like, you know, when I ended Delore, I was I was very much like, that's done. And if you like that, you're going to hate what I'm doing next. And like, I was very <laughs> like, everything was compartmentalized. <laughs> but just in the last few years, really kind of through this journey of coming back to Delore, I've realized like, everything I've done is really part of the same journey even if it's a different genre or a different, you Band know. Band name in general too. Like, it's always cool that it's like, yeah. it's part of this knit like tight knit little, like, Hey, it's me. (laughs) Right. And so I'm getting more conscious of just trying to bring anyone that's followed me at different stages kind of together in the, you know, this journey (laughs) here I come. And that's that's really the, (laughs) and that's really the best way to do that. I think in my opinion. Yeah. I, I, I'm definitely realizing now it just took me like almost psychologically a long time to sort of like realize that it's all kind of one and the same. And I had had such a kind of like split personality is going on with different projects for a while. But, um, but now I see that, I mean, you could just put a big jumbled, you know, shuffle playlist together of all the stuff and it, and it works, you know, but, so you don't have yeah. to like layer out the album. It's just like shuffle it and it all goes together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, for today's listeners, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much how you do it. So yeah, well, inside the so mind different. of Shane Tutmark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's talk about your new album. Uh, what was the writing and recording process like for it? You know, I, when I finished the Royal We, which came out last June, and that was the first Diller record in like 13 years, I really had no intentions to jump right into another record you know I kind of was like going to take a break because that was kind of coming after about three years of um well actually I did the math the other day and like from like September 2019 until now I've, I've worked on six records um producing for other artists and and records of my own and stuff and so it's it's been you know a lot <laughs> of uh you know, just constantly working on something. So I really didn't anticipate jumping right into another record. But as we were right in the middle of a pandemic, you know, um, barely leaving the house, it just kind of happened, you know, not not any options to tour or whatever. Um, it just songs started coming. And, you know, thankfully, I have a home studio and, uh, you know, whatever instruments I need. So I was able just to kind of like basically start it immediately after finishing the Royal We. Um, and it was, you know, a really fluid process. It was, you know, the songs just flowed out. I mean, there's probably somewhere around 30, 35 songs I worked on and oh, wow. I like narrowed, narrowed them down to, <laughs> to the 10 that are on the record. But Jeez. yeah. Hey, it just means you have another, you know, you have another two or three albums in you. <laughs> and, and, then, and then there's you know what it is you'll write all those songs and it's like oh i can just make another and then you'll write more songs replace those songs and they'll keep getting replaced that's well how, that's that's, how that's exactly that's that's how it was it because never ends. yeah the royal the royal we was all songs that had had been like kind of left unfinished from the original delore period oh. um so i kind of thought that i would just continue with that because there's still a pile of songs and um, but what kept happening was I'd, I'd kind of start working on one of the old ones to finish them up and then I'd write a new one and, 
then little by little, the new ones kept beating out the old ones. And so this new record is really the first like brand new start to finish, you know, Delore material um, since its original era. Oh, wow. That, that's that's hmm. cool because it is. It's, I recognize like I was listening to some of the songs. I'm hearing like the song. My favorite song of yours so far is uh, CPR. That's been one of my oh, tops, cool. and it's from that new old friends. <laughs> that whole album, my dad even loves it. I we we got it. He as soon as I showed That's it, it's it one of those things he went on eBay and looked for the CD instantly. He was because we haven't done that in a while. We only do that like with Matthew Sweet or the Posey stuff like that. And it was like so yeah. I showed him this album, and he was like, "All right, I'm gonna go buy it." So, that is a wild uh, out of all journey. the songs that you do uh, that you have, you know, your your massive shuffled playlist catalog here. Uh, what do you go back yeah. to often? To one that you like listen to or seem to always kind of tend to think about all the time if you have one or two or three <laughs> honestly i don't listen once i'm kind of done mm-hmm. with the project i don't go back that often like oh, okay. i mean unless i have to learn a song for a show or oh, yeah, yeah. um you know i uh um it, you know and it's tough to pick favorites and stuff like that but you know that new old friends record was an important one for me because that was the first time i like produced a record myself oh wow and, and so uh you know, the first two Delora records I'd had collaborators and stuff. But um, so that one to me kind of feels the most connected to what I'm doing now with Delore, um, because it's kind of a more or less a continuation of that sort of style of, of, uh, yeah. And I definitely know. hear that with the, uh, like songs like summer rain that are on the album and a couple others that threw me, I was like, Oh, that sounds like that new old friends style. Yeah. Right, back. <laughs> right on. That's cool. <laughs> One song that really caught my attention from the new album was the title track. What can you tell us about the story behind that song? You know, it, the the idea of like using televangelist in a song had kind of been floating around my head for a while. <laughs> I, I, it, I don't know how apparent it is in the actual you know, what ended up being the song, but the sort of idea that kind of through social media, like we're all sort of televangelists now, we're all, you know, selling something, we're all trying to get that salvation through post likes and (laughs) not to mention mention the word televangelist just rolls off the tongue. Oh, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know, I I went back and forth on whether I should have used ventriloquist as the title because that almost would make more sense in the lyrics but i wanted to get that idea about televangelist out because i think there is something to that just like in today's age like we've kind of all turned into that um you twist and like you know evangelist <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. yeah yeah but uh you know it's sort of a love song but i mean like a lot of my songs that are love songs they're sort of also about something else and a lot of times i notice that my songs are kind of more or less talking to the song or the audience of the song or like the muse that's inspiring the song. And so I think in a lot of ways, like opening the record with that, the whole idea of like, I don't want to change you. I want to strange you. It's sort of like about following, you know, Mm. uh, following your own weird path and your, you know, follow your bliss, whatever, you know, it's like, it's sort of that idea. And so I, I like opening the record with that sort of, Cantation of like let's get weird together let's go you know <laughs> one more thing i want to mention about televangelist is that i noticed a big like sort of a little bit of an yellow influence in the song mm. like, a big fan of that there's by any chance or- you know it's you're definitely you know i've only shared the record with a couple people but you're definitely already not the first or third oh. or fourth person <laughs> to say that. <laughs> that's funny you know i i'm an absolutely massive beatles fan uh-huh and uh and tom petty (laughs) yeah and so jeff lynn is is definitely you know been uh a big part of so many things i love elo is not the biggest influence for me but um but i definitely hear that and even that little descending guitar line is a little bit of like a jeff lynn tip of the hat because he always does i (laughs) sort of heard some like i kind of like going into it a little bit i kind of heard like a little bit of telephone line i guess Mm, mm mm-hmm yeah. And to me, you know, I, I do love that song, but to me, I, it's just like a great Paul McCartney song that wasn't written by Paul McCartney, but <laughs> you know, I, love that. I don't know. That's just the way I've always looked at ELO. Like when I first discovered them, I was like, whoa, it's like having new Beatles records, you know, but um, I can't say that I ever fully felt like a fan of, of those records, but. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, we can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask the next song, uh, same similar kind of question. What was the uh, writing inspiration behind Summer Rain? 
You know, again, Summer Rain, uh, you know, this happens to me a lot. I'll just sort of have an idea for a song and it will just sort of like kick around in my head for a couple years until I figure out a way to do something with it. But, um, you know, I, uh, I'm from Seattle originally, and so I'm not afraid of the rain, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I often find myself, you know, the only person sitting outside in the rain, like outside of a coffee shop or... Um, <laughs> And so I felt like there's been so many songs that sort of villainized rain over the years. And it's always, you know, sunshine is good, rain is bad. And so I kind of thought, let's let's write a little ode to uh, a nice summer rain. And uh, and it felt like a very kind of Delore topic yeah. to go with. I, I had first thought yeah, of it back yeah. in my solar twin period, and it didn't really fit in with that. So because, um, you know, like you mentioned the rain, you know, you think the Beatles rain. It's like when the rain yeah. comes, people hide their heads, you know. Uh, right better off being dead <laughs> kind of yeah, you know, yeah. and then it's like you on the other hand are like you know it sounds like a beach boys type i heard beach boys when i heard the, the song and i was like for I heard, sure yeah it's like that ode to like the beach but instead it's rain you know yeah that was really cool <laughs> yeah Shane, by any chance have you heard the song i wish it would rain by roger joseph manning jr uh, that sounds familiar rogers from jellyfish um, the band Jellyfish. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, He's from Jellyfish. No. We'll and, have to send the share song. with you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, this song the song's basically about like someone wishing they could go back to their childhood, but like the, the metaphor is I wish it would rain. Oh, okay. And I think I, I can I can consider that a good rain song. Like it's not demonizing it or anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll definitely send that to you. Yeah, All right. Yeah, please very, do. Very, very good song. The next question I had for you too was, uh, and you mentioned Tom Petty and I was already, I was getting mm. to that. Uh, so the day Tom Petty died had me in tears. Last time I got high was the day Tom Petty died Laying on my back with headphones on So uh, what is your favorite Tom Petty song? oh out. man you know tom petty was one of those guys that you know growing up you'd see his videos occasionally mm -hmm. he always had really cool music videos but really getting into him wasn't until i was working on the new old friends album oh, and wow. uh and we have a song called butter knife suicide and i remember a few uh people kept saying oh this reminds me of like tom petty and you know i only kind of knew him vaguely from hearing free fallen on the radio mm -hmm. or videos but it, it was at that point, someone was like, dude, you got to listen to Wildflowers. And so I I listened to that record for the first time and just dove headfirst into it. And then just fell in love with so much of his music, but especially that 90s period, for whatever reason, for me, is just like, everything is perfect. Like Wildflowers, She's the One soundtrack, oh, yeah. Echo. Um, so it's hard to pick Learning up. the Fly was one of the 90s ones, right? I think that was eighties. Let me see. I, I think that was a Jeff Lynn. Uh, one. It all comes I, back to Jeff Lynn, guys. Yeah, it all yeah. comes back to and Jeff yes, Lynn. It came out. <laughs> yeah, it came out in nineteen ninety one, and that oh, is easily okay. my favorite Tom Petty song. So yeah, that's a good one. Okay, I forget. <laughs> Always that a good combo. I think of Wildflowers as the kickoff of the nineties, but that was like ninety four, I think, or something. So um, a, yeah, I like um, you wreck me, baby. That's a good one too. I mean, any any song off yeah. Wildflowers would probably could easily be my favorite. I mean, it's I, like a I love album. I'm I'm so like with yeah. me though with Tom Petty, I'm the same way. It's like there's just too many songs to pick one. Yeah, it's like the Beatles. yeah. It's like going up to somebody. What's your favorite Beatles song? Well, what era? Yeah. What yeah. What album? You know. What it, month? What month? Yeah, literally. <laughs> For the eight short years that they were together, there was just so much yeah. material from their young. It's like you know, going forever for it, and uh, it's just you can't yeah. pick one. It's like okay. no, and that's the same for me with Tom Petty. I mean, I remember hearing Tom Petty at the bar, like cover bands covering him, and then getting really into him on my own. But my dad was always a Tom Petty fan too. But Damn the Torpedoes is a phenomenal album too. So it's like, oh, there's just too much <laughs> yeah. <good> stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I mean, I still haven't even heard all of his albums yet. You know, it's crazy. And I've, it's, I've it's, been a fan it, it for 20 nice years. Enough time to go back. Like, uh, yeah, Mud Crutch too is a real good one. Uh, his one of his groups, or yeah, like the Birds covers, like Lover of the Bayou is insane. And I'm a huge Birds fan, so I'm like, this is everything. Hey, hearing Tom Petty do the Birds is like one of my great regrets. Is uh, I was dating this girl mm -hmm. like 10 years ago, and she had tickets to see Tom Petty. Oh. 
and I and I broke up with her before we oh, before no. the show. <laughs> oh, and dude, I no. I wish I could have stuck it out for like one more week, you know, because I never got to see him. But yeah, um, I know. But so that's that song actually just came literally. Um, a friend of mine, uh, you know, I don't I don't smoke weed very often. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I've I've done it way too many times for how little I actually enjoy it. But um, I always like the idea of getting high and listening to music but it just never I, i'm i'm just too high strong for weed or something yeah, like that I got you. but a, a friend of mine had left a joint at my house and uh and i was like well i don't want it to go to waste so i smoked it and i be, before i realized it i had smoked the whole thing like a cigarette just you know down yeah. in this huge fat joint and i was like so high it was like she that kind of like <laughs> yeah i was like i don't even know what to do with myself and so i had just finished doing the solar twin record and i was like oh well i want to listen to the new my new record stone for the first time and see what that is like and so i just laid on the couch yeah. with headphones on um it I, I mean i still can remember what a crazy listening experience that was but as soon as i came up from listening to the record i checked my phone and my friend texted me oh, tom wow. petty died hmm. and i was so stoned i had no way to like process like but that it something about that felt poetic of like Tom Petty, you know, like let's roll another joint. You know, it just kind of felt like appropriate you in a way. Yeah. So I kind of felt like there was something to that that felt kind of poetic of just being, you know, high off my balls, like, you know, <laughs> find, finding out that Tom yeah. Petty died, you know. And it's like, how do you, yeah. Yeah. So that, so that's been like however long now, like three or four years since he passed. And that idea had kind of just been kicking around in my head forever. And um, so again, it kind of felt like when I was looking for something to write about that just kind of came back out. And um, and I've never written like a kind of tribute to an artist that I love before. And um, so I, I tried to kind of pull in as many different musical aspects of Tom Petty's music and um, kind of, you know, little tips of the hat to to tom and and his sound and everything yeah. on that song and it's mm-hmm. cool because the sound kind of the song kind of sounds like tom petty like something he would do, right just really really kind of brings it all together you know yeah so it's one thing to cover an artist it's another song to make an original that actually references the artist and brings that whole feel and i love that i love when artists right because and he covers that song it's like covering a cover you know it's just, it's like yeah a, <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he definitely has been, you know, to me, I, what I love about his place in sort of music history is he's sort of, I always looked at him as sort of like the bridge between sort of the Beatles era and the birds and stuff, you know, and then into like 90s, you know, m- music and, and whatever. And so he sort of was this glue that sort of kept that thread of, um, you know, rock and roll kind of going, you yeah. know. Through, through those lean years of the 80s and stuff you know so uh so he's always been like a, a strong ingredient and inspiration to me so it yeah, like felt right high school tom petty was a lot to me too as just as much as the posies were and other bands like around that when i was growing up like i grew up with a lot of classic rock so the who like all that and just like tom petty i, I gravitated towards and then i found out about power pop and i was like all right this is everything now i'm just gonna focus on this drum <laughs> because everything yeah. it just sounds so good and it's, it's not just like one era you have 70s stuff you have the nerves you have all these older bands and then it goes through all of history it's not just like oh it was one genre during the 80s it's not like new wave where it was just like kind of sectioned at a certain time and then it became something else so it's, it's kind of cool right. to see a genre like develop especially rock's been around forever and I, was like, yeah. I find it funny when people call themselves a classic rock band. I'm like, how does that work? Because to, to yeah. be a classic rock band, you had to have been back <laughs> in the day. I saw somebody I saw somebody post today like, oh, here are classic rock band, uh, this new classic rock band. I'm like, how does that work? It's just a rock band, but okay. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm like, how do I call myself <laughs> that? You know, they're kind of like, in a sense, uh, televangelisting themselves as a classic rock band. There you go. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. It comes full circle. Uh, Tyler, you're, you're good to go for the next question, my friend. All right, cool. So my my last question. Um, so we've been so we've been telling you about our favorite tracks <laughs> on the new album. What are your favorite tracks on the new album? Oh, man. Like I said, f- favorites are tough for me because at, at some point in the process, every single one of them uh, was my favorite, you know, that's what kind of got them on the record. But, um, (laughs) you know, I guess one that, that felt kind of special and that sort of sticks out like a sore thumb maybe on the record is, is one called, uh, I'm not mad anymore. Oh, I get it. You go up, I go down the universe. 
safe and sound. And that one to me, I guess, is is interesting because I kind of feel like it it sort of could almost have come out on any of my projects over the years, like whether it was a Shane Tutmark record or a Solar Twin record or Delore. And um, and I think what it's what it's talking about um, for me is uh, maybe a little bit more, a little deeper, maybe than some of the other songs on on the record. I mean, for the most part, I think this is a super fun collection of tunes, but I think that one maybe goes a little bit deeper into uh sort of just like understanding your place in the Mm -hmm. universe and um and uh you know i've over the years now playing music over 20 years like you know you see different friends of yours do really well and you know it's sort of a little bit of a song about making peace with uh you know just wherever you are in the universe is where you're supposed to be kind of thing you know i like that because it is tough to like like other people you know make it and that it's like everybody has their own path and it, it's weird yeah. to look at it. It's like, there's days, you know, I can admit that I feel like, Oh God, I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Where am I going? Right. You know, I've been doing sure. all this music, yeah. all this stuff, but it's great right. because, you know, the opportunities I've had to meet artists like you and to have people come on the show for Tyler and I, and it's just been something so cool that not everybody has. And it's like, that's been yeah. our part. That's our part, you know? So you, you see everybody, but then you never know those people might be looking at you going the same thing you're looking <laughs> at them for, you know? Yeah. The other song that sort of touches on that is called the scenic route. And I I think that's sort of the way I look at it now is that I've, I've taken the scenic route all these years, you know, so. You know, you could constantly be looking over your shoulder going like, why is that not happening for me or this or that? But if you actually just look at all the amazing things that you have going on, there's, you know, yeah. uh, it can kind of, you know, propel you to better things, you know, if you look at the world more that way. But you one so thing I, I want to yeah. say is, uh, you know, kind of prior to putting out the Royal We last year, mm. I, I didn't really know about the Power Pop community on oh. Facebook and elsewhere and, and sort of stumbled upon it. And that's been like one of the greatest blessings of this whole era for me is just, to, I, I agree. Yeah. You know, just finding like-minded people and, um, you know, power pop and, and, and you indie people pop that know or, your records too. And you just, well, I mean, it, you know? yeah, it's like only people like, like me that like stumbled upon you message. Are you commenting the other day when uh, me and Ivan actually both of us commented about hearing one of your other songs. And then you commented like, here's a link. <laughs> like you saw yeah. it. Here's a link. I was like, we freaked yeah. out. And then that's when I was like, I'm going to ask you. Cause I used to do that all the time. I would ask artists the podcast. And that's what actually uh, part of like having Matt Leogard uh, the other day on Monday and then having you and then we have John Hour coming up and stuff like that brought us kind of back into like we need to do this podcast we, we got to get back because there's just so many artists that are out there that are looking for younger guys to talk about their music to get it out there instead of the uh, the same old same old you know no it's so yeah. cool to find you guys and I love awesome. what you guys are Thank doing you. and I've, I've been <laughs> yeah, listening to so a few much. episodes and Sweet. Um, I'm I'm uh like 20 years like long uh sort of casual friends with the posies guys from oh, cool. my seattle days and awesome. stuff and, and yeah. even last time they were in nashville i i opened for them with my solar twin stuff oh, and cool. um so it was cool to see hey, them solar on there twin, solar sister there you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> totally yeah because yeah uh, we we've talked about it a billion times on this show uh <laughs> we were huge fans we actually started with ken ken was our first guy and then john coming on and then we had a ken and john episode with big star so we're huge big star fans so yeah i listened to that one we might have have to have you on again to talk about tom petty we do uh band chats we just started doing a series where we have um like uh we recently did a fountains of wayne one uh recently Mm. um and we'll have another one where we have two of our artists come back and actually meet with each other and then have a discussion about the bands that we have at the topic. So everybody kind of nerds out about okay. one band. So we'll have to have you back. Well, I mean, there's so many bands I can oh, yeah. nerd out about. So oh, feel perfect. free. Yeah, yeah we'll have to we'll contact you. Uh, uh, Beatles. Yeah. Really. Perfect. Yeah, Tom Petty. The Beatles, I am just an uh, open book about that stuff. The, so all that stuff. Yeah. I love Badfinger. Yeah. So I've been wanting to have a oh, yeah. Badfinger <laughs> discussion at some point. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Killer. Well, thanks, Shane. Thank you. Well, yeah, thank, thank you, guys. So much, man. Yeah. Great having you on. It was great to be here.